On today's episode of The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, we're going to take a look at Tony Kuyper's brand new TK8 beta panel. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I had a lot of responses on the uh, TK8 beta. I said if I had enough people requesting an introduction video to it, I would make it. So I'm doing that today. Before we get started, I want to take a look at uh, Tony's new blog post, and I'll link his uh, blog in the uh, description below. I want to read this first uh, paragraph in Tony's blog post but because it's kind of important about Tony's new panel, which is UXP architecture. Adobe's new UXP plugin architecture continues to evolve rapidly. Less than a year ago, Adobe indicated that the current CEP architecture for extension panels like the TK7 panel would be supported for years to come. Now, in this post on, a, on an Adobe forum, there are hints that CEP panels may be deprecated as soon as Photoshop 2022, which is likely to be released in October this year. CEP panels are essentially already deprecated on Mac M1 computers unless running Photoshop in emulation mode, and I think this decision not to support CEP on Mac M1 computers is possibly a signal that Adobe is hoping to move entirely to UXP plugins sooner than originally anticipated. Also, I want to mention, if you already own the TK7 version 2 panel, this is a free uh, upgrade for you. So go to Tony's blog post. As I said, it's linked in the uh, description below, and it'll tell you how to get the uh, TK8 beta panel. Now let's take a look at the TK8 beta. And by the way, don't forget, if you're interested in purchasing any of Tony's products, videos, or panels, uh, when you're on his site, use my promo code DK15 and you'll save 15% off any of his products, which is really nice. On my Photoshop uh, screen, I'm showing you uh, the old version TK7 Go panel and the new TK8 Beta. On the left is the TK8 Beta, on the right is the TK7 Go. Now, as I said at the start of the video, this is an introduction to the TK8 Beta, so we won't be making a lot of adjustments today, but I'll show you some new features here and some differences, you know, some similarities, differences, with both of the panels. To get your panels out onto your Photoshop display, let me show you where you're gonna find them. Now, you originally found your uh, TK7 panels under Window and under Extensions. See these three checks, Combo, CX, and Go, right there. Okay, so they were found under Extensions, but now the TK8 panel, remember, it's UXP architecture. It's found in a different location. It's found under Plugins, and you'll find them in here, okay? Here's the different uh, TK8, uh, beta panels in here okay so that's where you'll find them so that's important because you know that kind of stumped me i'm like where are these panels at and i didn't realize it that's where they are they're under plugins one of the new features that i really like with the tk8 panel is the fact that when you hover over things you're going to get help without holding down the option or alt key so that's kind of nice right you can hover over anything and it's going to tell you what it does. Because remember on the TK7 Go panel and the CX, uh, TK7 CX and Combo, you had to hold the uh, option key down to see, you know, the uh, help screens. And that was nice. I, and it's really cool that Tony did all this work putting all these help screens in here. And thank you for that, Tony. But I love this new update where they're there for you. Until you get to learn them and know them, then you can shut them off. To shut them off, you just find these uh, TK... Uh, icons right here on all the panels you're going to find them like where is it on this panel i know it's here somewhere where oh it's right here i couldn't find it it's right there tk so any tk if you click it you're going to get some options here for instance you can shut off the tool tips right here so click that and now the tool tips are shut off and then all you have to do is, again, you can hold the option key down and get them back. So if you say, geez, I forgot what that was and I shut off my tool tips, now I'm in trouble. No, you're not. All you have to do is hold your option key down and hover over just like you did on the TK7 Go. So that's kind of nice, right? And remember, you can turn them on or off right here. So a nice feature. Now let's turn our attention to the interface. I really like the new interface. Uh, it looks a lot cleaner to me. You know, I like the larger icons on the multi-mask panel and uh, just the, the shape of the buttons are a little different, but it looks modern, more cleaner. It's fresher. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. The TK7 Go panel is now called the TK8 multi-mask panel. Right now it's in the beta form, obviously, but the icons are larger, 
compared to the ones on the right. Now the icons here, the first four icons are the same as what's in the Go panel. And the next two icons are the same as these two icons. We have one more new icon here, which I'm super excited about, and I'll show you this one later. In my instructional videos on the uh, TK7 Go panel, we've looked at these first three uh, icons right here, what they can do, the lights, uh, darks, uh, midtones mask, the zone mask, and the color infinity mask. We haven't looked at the saturation vibrance yet or these other icons yet. So we're going to save those for another video. I'm not going to get into these today, but suffice it to say, everything's the same here. The only difference is this guy right here. And we'll take a look at that one in a minute or so from now. In case you're wondering what all this extra space is for in here, this is for the future. You know, Tony has a lot of plans for his uh, TK8 panels, and this is giving him room to grow. So on this layout area, he can add more great products for us. So we're looking forward to those coming, Tony. All right, and who knows, maybe by the time the new release is out, there might be a, a new surprise in there. Who knows? I don't know. Now let's take a look at the uh, combo and the CX panel. Now these two panels do the same thing, just like in the TK, um, TK7 panels, the combo and the CX. It's just different layouts, depending which one you use. I've used the CX, and now I'm kind of using the T TK7 combo. So whatever, whatever mood you're in, use the one you want. But they do the same thing. The layout's different. I like how Tony added some nice light color shading to the different buttons. Really nice. A lot easier on the eyes. Thank you for that, Tony. Not, I'm not complaining about the other one. But this, you know, when I compare this, the new TK8 to the TK7, I like this layout a lot better. Now, you can still highlight uh, the uh, functions that you use the most. For instance, like uh, the adjustment layers are found inside of here. So I have that uh that section highlighted okay and to unhighlight something just right click the highlight goes away right click again it comes back so any feature in here that you use a lot like uh, for instance um, I like to uh, stamp my layers together and normally I use the shortcut shift option command or alt e to stamp layers together but now I can just click one button and stamp all my layers together but again I can highlight that just so I know, hey, that's something you use a lot, Dave. Remember that one. Or your actions, which are found in here. Okay. And so remember, there's a lot of stuff inside of this little TK action uh, section here. So click on that. And that is found right here on the old TK7 panels. Okay. Same deal. But again, I like to highlight that one because I use that a lot. There's a lot of really cool stuff in there. And we're going to be looking at a lot of my favorite things that are in there in upcoming videos. Now, here's another new feature that I truly, truly love. And let me go ahead and make a selection and watch these panels when I do. I'm going to make a selection. And notice things happen here. Now look at the TK7 Go panel. These little red dashes come up here. I always had a hard time seeing those. They alert you whenever you have a selection made. And that's kind of important. Anybody that works with Photoshop knows how important selections are and how you need to know if you have a selection there or not. Because sometimes Photoshop will act kind of weird and won't do the things you want because the selection has been made and it's been hidden. So this lets you know if you have a hidden selection somewhere or a selection is right out in front of you like this one here. But if I were to hide the selection by clicking this button uh, right, where is it here? Okay, it'll hide that selection, but that, that selection is still made. If I click the same button again, you can see that selection. Okay, so I'm just toggling it off or on. Okay, so this may be a button that I would highlight. And also this guy here too, which will shut selections on and off. I'm not going to get into that one now, but that particular button hides selections. Okay, but on the TK8 panels here the multi-mask the cx and the combo check the uh selection indicators i love the moving one around the tk8 multi-mask really easy to see thank you tony that's fantastic i love it and then we have these rainbow soft rainbow colors going around our combo panel and also our cx panel you know depending on which one you have open but very clear indications that yes houston we have a selection made Thank you, Tony. I love it. And remember, I told you I wouldn't show you this button, but I lied. I'm going to show it to you. This removes selection. So when I click it, I'll remove any selections I have. I won't just hide them. I'll remove them. I'll click it and watch my selection indicators. They're gone. So now I know I don't have a selection. Really great. How many times have you ever hit a selection in Photoshop and you're wondering what the heck is going on? Hey, I've done it many a time, but with Tony's panels, that's never going to happen again. 
I'm sure there's more things I need to show you, but for now, I'm going to show you one final thing here because I don't want this video getting too long. And that is this icon right here. I love this new icon. I'm just going to briefly show you a few things about it. I know I said I love the icon, but I actually like what the icon allows us to do to a layer mask that's already on an adjustment layer. It's really cool. To demonstrate this, however, I need to put an adjustment layer there. So I can either come down in Photoshop and come to this icon and put an adjustment layer on there, any old adjustment layer I want. But let's go ahead and use our TK8 combo panel right here. So I'm going to click right here. And here's various different adjustment layers, the most common ones that we as photographers use. Okay, so let me just put a simple curves adjustment on here. Click this, and there's my curves adjustment layer. And let me just take this curve and just pull down on it, just darken the overall image. And now we're going to see what this uh, button does. By the way, uh, this uh, button right here, LM Layer Mask, it was a layer mask modifying uh, button that lets you do different modifications to your layer mask found in the TK7 Go panel. But this guy is kind of like this on steroids. And I'm going to show that to you now. I went ahead and reset my workspace just to get rid of some of that clutter with all those panels, you know, next to the image right here. But this is normally how I work. I have my multi-mask panel here and my combo panel here, and I have my channels opened up here. This is just the way I work. Maybe I'll do a video on how to set up uh, a workspace at some point. Uh, but today, this is what I'm using, and here's my layer, my adjustment layer with just a slight darkening adjustment. I just pulled down on this on the center of the curve here a little bit, just to darken up the overall midtones in the image. Okay, so there's the before and after, and I got this white layer mask on here. So now let me go ahead and click on this icon right here, and let's check it out. So here we go. Here we have some cool stuff here. We can look at the image, or we could look at what the layer mask looks like right now. It's just a plain old white layer mask, right? I'll show you these uh, this two up section here, which is really awesome. Adjust your layer mask right here. We'll see that shortly, and you're gonna love it. And then we have our basic uh, masks here. We have our light, our darks, our lights, and our midtones mask, which is nice. Let's just for the heck of it at this point put a lights one mask on here. Okay, and you can see that layer mask there. Now, if I click this icon, you can see what it looks like right there. Now, remember, this is representing a layer mask. So all the light areas will let the adjustment show through and the dark areas will kind of ease back on the adjustment wherever I have this curves adjusted at. Now, remember, this is all about altering a layer mask that is already on a layer. Okay, so for instance, we may have already made a layer mask with say like a zone mask or something something like that. And so we'd already have a mask here. So we may not have a need to use the light dark or the light starks in the midtones mask. We may not have a need for that. So we could go right here to this section, which is the modification section. And we can use any of these tools that we want. Uh, a typical one that I use a lot are the paint brushes, the uh, levels the curves and the widen the mask and narrow the mask and uh, dodging and burning so all really great stuff in here it could be a little tough right now when you're just working on the black and white layer mask but that's where to make your adjustments but that's where these guys come in handy here let me go ahead and set this back to the color image here now remember we added a uh, curves adjustment and it's uh, slightly darkened the image okay now let's check out this adjust layer mask section here okay now we can do this a couple different ways we can do a uh, do a side by side view or a horizontal top and bottom view for this image I'm gonna go ahead and use a side by side view so I'll click on this now you'll notice I have my two images here uh, one is larger, one is smaller, but you see this icon right here. Click this. This will lock the sizes together. Now follow me here. What I want to do is have this left screen show me the layer mask, what it looks like. So I'm going to come back to this icon that I showed you before. Click it. This is my layer mask. This is my image. Now, whenever I make adjustments with any of these adjustments, whatever I do to this side, you'll see the effect take place on this side, which is really something I guarantee you, you will love. Now, remember, I've darkened everything through this uh, curves adjustment, and I'm through a lights one layer mask, okay? So the lighter areas are actually getting darkened, okay? But now let me show you some of these modification adjustments here, okay? For instance, let's go to a white paintbrush. And uh, I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger. And I'm going to paint with pure white paint because I'm at 100% opacity. 
across here. And when I do watch the image on the right, now you won't, when I first drag the brush across here, you won't see a change until I lift up on the brush. As soon as I lift up, you see how that's gotten darker because I'm painting light. Now remember, white is letting this adjustment come through, which is a darkening adjustment. So if I paint another line across there, you can see as soon as I lift up, it gets darker. So that's cool, right? Now let me step back two steps. One, two. And now what if I wanted a more precise adjustment? So I could, uh, and I only want to affect this area down here. If I wanted to affect everything, I could use a curves adjustment, right? Because I can just lighten up all the light areas with a curves. It will affect everything globally. But what if I only wanted to affect the, uh, the floor down here, the ocean floor? the light areas I want to go darker. So I could get myself a dodge tool, right? So I want to lighten the light areas and let's make my dodge tool a little lighter. Now you'll notice I'm coming up to this uh, toolbar here because there's a little bug in Photoshop and they haven't worked this out yet. This is not Tony's problem, this is Photoshop. Uh, to make your shortcuts work, you have to like tap right here and uh, the focus will return back to, uh, to uh, Photoshop, meaning with the UXP panel, it takes focus away whenever you use that panel. So if you can't get a shortcut to work, just come up to the toolbar here, the options bar, tap it one time, and then I can go ahead and use my shortcut. So I'm just using my uh, control and option key in a Mac to make my brush larger and smaller and dragging my mouse right and left, okay? But I have a dodge tool here set at the default setting of 50% exposure set for the highlights. So I'm going to paint across here. Now the same thing, you won't see an adjustment take place until I lift up off the painting here. I'm gonna lift up, now watch the picture on the right. See, it gets darker, right? The, just the light areas. And I could come down here and continue can continue to paint with this dodge tool and all those light areas get lighter. And as soon as I release it, which is right now, those areas show up darker in my image, so I'm locally adjusting them. But that's how that works. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. I'll be doing a lot more videos, so if you're not catching on just right now, maybe rewind, watch it again. But this is really cool. And another thing I want to say, anytime you're using any of Tony's panels, everything is related to Photoshop. All, everything tied to those panels are Photoshop functions, whether they be actions or luminosity masks. Tony just makes it simple and easy for you to get to the tools that you need to use and to create luminosity masks and color infinity masks and all that stuff easy for you that would take Tons of time to do it yourself in Photoshop. Not that you couldn't do it, but Tony's panels make it simple for you. So now we have effectively altered that adjustment layer right here, okay? Very intelligently with dodging tools. Pretty cool stuff. Now remember, whatever you need, any tool you need, you'll find it right here. You can widen the selection, narrow the selections, do all that stuff. All I needed to use was a simple dodging tool. I affected the bottom without affecting the top portion of the image. And it's just that easy. Now you may think this takes a long time, but I'll tell you, once you get the hang of these panels, these adjustments go really quick. The more you do this stuff, the easier it gets. And you'll find your workflow will truly speed up. Once you're satisfied, I recommend closing the black and white window. You can close either one, but if you close the color window, the image will be black and white and you'll have to reset it back to color. And there's my adjustment. So here's my before and here's my after. And then just come and click this X and that'll bring you back to your uh, main TK8 panel view. There it is, an introduction to the TK8 beta panel. I love the new panel. It's moving in the right direction. So thank you, Tony, for all your hard work that you put into this panel. I can't wait till the final release. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please like, share, subscribe, and then click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.